Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, friends, a uh, long time we've been waiting to bring out this uh, broadcast here. And this is on the evidence that I have. I have it stacked right here on my desk right now. If you can just see uh, here, I have two, about 250 pages of documents uh, much like what you see here on the front cover here from a source that has handed this over to me uh, and that information is about to be placed in your hands as well. These are documented evidence of actions that have happened over the span of 25 uh, plus years and, uh, and of course, uh, this is only a drop in the bucket. There's more than a thousand pages of these documents that show the intricate relationships uh, between money laundering, organized crime, uh, the uh, drug families, drug cartels, uh, Italian mafia, and the relationships between Russian and American politicians uh, that just goes deeper than you could ever even imagine. And unfortunately, President Trump's name is also in the middle of this. I know the man that originally shared this information with me, uh, his desire was not to just focus with President Trump. He really wanted people to understand that there is a major organized crime network that is operating here inside the United States that is very deeply and rooted and connected to the organized crime in Russia and it's affecting the political circle. Just recently I had a conversation, I will not say with who, but with a former congressman uh, that is 12 years in office, uh, no longer in office now, but as I spoke to them about this situation and shared with them a lot of this information that they personally had insight to as well from a different angle. I wanted to know, is there anybody that would really take this information seriously? And of course, my thought would be Democrats probably will jump all over this. But my desire though is not to see the Democrats jump on it but for people to be educated to know what really goes on in politics. And this congressman, is, is the same with myself, said to me, Steve, there is no one that they knew of that is not corrupt in one way or the other in the political circle in Washington, D.C., be it Democrat or Republican. I was told all you have to do is look at the way they vote and you will see clearly that they are very much bought out. There was one particular though um, individual that they pointed out to me and that was Rand Paul. And I was told Rand Paul is not his father Ron but out of all the politicians in Washington, D.C., I was told he's probably the only man that actually cares more about what's going on in our nation today. Now, I knew from my own experience working with the CIA and then afterwards investigating uh, the things that I saw in my life, afterwards, putting the pieces together, realizing the organized crime network that was going on, uh, I realized that both Democrat and Republican work together and are all corrupt. So when I was beginning to put this information together about Trump and Biden, who's got the dirtiest hands in Ukraine? I've stated from the very beginning there's no question whatsoever in my mind that Joe Biden and his son, more specifically his son, have had some pretty dirty dealings in Ukraine that did not favor very well for the people of that country. I knew this from my own past experience, watching the money laundering through drug cartels in order to arm the Contras in Nicaragua and at the same time pay off all the politicians. 
I'm going to share some of that information with you, something I've never done in the past tonight. But before we get started, there is a lot of this information in order for you to better understand what we're going to be looking at. A lot of this information here is a stealth money trail. It is how organized crime today launders their money. Whether they're doing organized crime, whether they're paying off hit men, whether or not they're uh, doing political favors for different countries as, uh, as we see their actions move forward. Nonetheless, there is a paper trail of LLCs, incorporations, LLPs, limited liability partnerships, limited liability corporations, etc., that you will find all through here. But what you will find consistently is that when certain events happen, those same names that are so closely connected always come up together. We've seen a lot of things in the news here lately about Ukraine. We've seen a lot about Lev Parnas. We've seen things about Igor Fruman. They've been arrested. These are uh, clients of Rudy Giuliani. And how that they talk about, even David Croatia, how they say that these men are all connected to Trump in one way or the other. Of course, President Trump denies that emphatically. And you may be very close to President Trump. You may love him, appreciate him as a politician, thinking that he is the most honest man and sincere man out there. And some people even accuse me as to say, well, Steve, you would have rather had Hillary Clinton as president. No, I certainly would not. And I don't know personally, if I looked at all the candidates we have now, I don't know of any candidate, Democrat or Republican, that is not compromised. Even Tulsi Gabbard, I've had a lot of respect for some of the things that she has said, but I've also watched some of the things she's done in her actions, and I realize she's also compromised. So no candidate in the Democrat or Republican arena is probably worth a flip. But the day comes that we have to make a decision on our own hearts. Are we going to continue to adore and ignore exonerate men or women on the earth as some kind of great rulers of the world? Are we ever going to truly lift up Jesus Christ? He's the one that will never fail you. He's the one that will not be found with his hands dirty in behind the scenes of politics. But many people have turned President Trump into an icon They've made him an idol. He has got like a rock star status. Maybe tonight it might help you to open your eyes. And I think as Americans, we really need to seriously consider how we vote in the polls. It'll be up to you how you make your own decision. And I am not encouraging you to go Democrat either. But I want you to realize just how sinister this is. I start off tonight before we go into the PowerPoint presentation that I have. And by the way, my PowerPoint presentation, even though I have hundreds of documents here, is based only on a very small, limited group of these documents. I will go back all the way to 2007. Uh, I will also go forward all the way to 2019. But I will only be dealing with certain areas. And again, it is not even beginning to touch the vast majority or the vast uh, complexity of this case. But later, I will place in the description, because the man that has given me this information that I've worked with now for a year, I will place for you in the description, he has placed the limited documents on a website where you can view those. That will be in the description, not at the beginning, but I will place it in there later so that you can review these documents for yourself as well. I'm not going to spin. So without any further ado, let's listen to this first clip here. Uh, he really decided that he wanted to, uh, you know, he didn't want to make, make a commitment, he didn't want to make a commitment, he 
don't really need to go any further. The audio is not the greatest because it is a phone recorded conversation, but it's to give you a little bit of an idea. It's almost like he didn't even try to disguise his voice, but he alleges that he is John Miller. As you can see on the screen, the name Miller. Uh, they're actually putting the transcript below this, uh, but many uh, critics have said it was no doubt Donald Trump calling, pretending to be his own publicist. All right, now President Trump, as President of the United States, has emphatically denied that that was his voice. So I pulled up, and of course the audio here is much better because he's on a microphone, not on a telephone calling. But just so you can hear the, his voice here, I wanted you to be able to see this here so that we can listen to his voice here. Because actually, as he's gotten older, yes, his voice, a little slight difference in change, but when he's younger, he still does sound much the same. And of course, that tone, a little bit of an arrogant type of voice there of the John Miller character. Listen to how he sounds here in 1991, the same year that that audio recording from a phone conversation was done with the news uh, agency. I, I believe that was the Washington Post. What would you like to see happen? With respect to what? With respect to the relationship or the future? Oh, I don't know. I just think... Uh... I'm just very happy for Marla tonight. This is uh, something she told me about. She's told me about it for a long time, and I look at the, the turnout. It's fantastic. Kind of gives you an idea that the voice is not any different, at least from my perspective. Of course, I'm not a voice analyst, but I think once you begin to look at the PowerPoint presentation that we've placed together tonight, it will make more sense to you in what's being said here. Ukraine, who has the dirtiest hands? And that's really where I got the idea for this report here. And the reason being it uh, is, has everything to do with this, the story that broke uh, back here. Uh, it's been now uh, September there. Trump claimed on a stalled aid for Ukraine draws new scrutiny. It's just one of the headlines. Military Times put that one out there. Uh, and that was because uh, when President Trump decided to put a hold on the Ukraine money, then after that, uh, the military aid that was to go to Ukraine, he comes out in this leaked information by uh, someone that was in there that heard him speaking to the person there, comes out on, uh, you know, secretly, but to put, report it out there that President Trump was exercising his power in a way that he should not have done to do an investigation on Joe Biden and his son by the Ukrainian government. It was only after that that he releases the funds. Now, this is what stirred up this entire impeachment process against the president. And quite frankly, myself included, I have stated this from the beginning, I've never been for an impeachment. Not, even, not for something like that. To me, that would kind of be silly. Um, you know, it, it does seem to be the nature of President Trump to ask some of the most outlandish things. And I'm sure that many Democrats take it very seriously that he has uh, breached the trust of or the oath of office in uh, asking a foreign nation to investigate uh, a, a political opponent. Now, for most Christians, this is the image that they kind of have in their mind when it comes to President Trump, a good godly man, a young Christian supported by the evangelical community and even having him being prayed for 27 if i remember right was how many evangelical advisors the president has not to mention chabad rabbis being his advisors and even catholic um, uh, bishops being his advisors as well He's got more advisors religiously than any other president in the history of the United States, as far as I am aware. And that's the image that a lot of people think they look at when they see President Trump. And this is one of the reasons why so many people have come against me for even dare to bring out a possibility that there could be connection to organized crime or money laundering or anything else for that matter. But you guys forget, I went through this in life. When I worked with the CIA, I didn't know as much as I know now, but I knew there were some very sinister things that went on back then. A lot of meetings with politicians. A lot of strange things happened afterwards. It wasn't until I did my own investigation 
around the time frame that I worked with these people and looked at the very politicians that I knew personally that I began to realize there was an organized crime network back then that was money laundering dope money and giving that money to buy weapons for the Contras and lining the pockets of many politicians not to mention bank accounts and everything else of private individuals that had nothing to do with the politicians other than their close connections to one another. And tonight, for the first time, I will share some of that information so that you can better understand why I felt the need to share this information with you. Again, I don't support the Washington Post other than to say uh, to share with you the different articles I see. We use different news sources here, but as this one just came out today, book by Anonymous describes Trump as cruel, inept, and a danger to the nation. Well, I don't think if it was Trump or a Democrat, either one, they're all a danger to the nation. That's without saying. But of course, the White House has already been fighting a back against that article there. Well, there was one thing after originally releasing this, uh, this film, this news broadcast on Trump's connection to Ukraine, which of course the evidence goes much further than Ukraine. We were mainly focused on trying to deal more with Ukraine uh, uh, connection and these alleged connections to organized crimes, money laundering, LLCs, etc. Well, after we go past this slide right here, we actually, in the first original two that we released there, which first time we left out the beginning of the uh, film, uh, we get, we really focus with the Trump alias, as we played in the beginning, the video where you could hear uh, the John Miller or John A. Miller, who uh, Trump has been uh, accused that he uses this alias name. Well, this... Of course, I didn't, there was some of the things that I forgot to put in because like I said, I'm dealing with 250 page document here and I've been researching this for a long time. Um, and thanks to our listeners here, we were able to uh, realize that there was one important ingredient that we needed to go back and amend this, uh, this film before it gets watched too much. Uh, and include this information here. This is where President Trump's own name is on his companies that links him to uh, all these different individuals that we spoke about before. And uh, so I'm gonna share some of those with you, but you gotta understand, this is just a very small, small drop in the bucket. Uh, there are other congressmen, senators that are involved uh, Blackburn, another one, not the senator himself, but her husband, uh, also comes up in these documents here, which you will have by this evening, you will have the link in the video as well, where you can actually go and see these documents for yourself. Um, but let me go into this part here, this amended version of the video there. Uh, does Biden know Trump's ties to Ukraine? Here on, and I'm backing up, I, I wanted to go way back so you could see, and, and like I said, there's going to be many more that I don't have in here, but I've got seven frames I'm going to share with you, and then we'll continue the video on. Trump's physical therapy that was minted in New York on the uh, July 17th of 2002, <clears throat> oddly enough, uh, also... Paul, Joseph, uh, Paul J. Manafort had also minted in Delaware Summer Breeze Associates on the 19th, two days later. If you fast forward to 2010 of uh, September 29th and also September 30th of 2010, again, Summer Breeze LTD, uh, Paul, Paul J. Manafort and Trump Marks Products. You know, these things can't be coincidences, friend. There are just too many of them. And like I said, I'm, I'm showing you just like a, a little tiny, little drop of water in an entire bathtub is all I'm showing you compared to all the documents. Uh, if you move on to 2005, um, and uh, there's some others up here, but these I think I'd already spoke about before. They just happen to be in the same uh, 
pages there that are that are being added on here but focusing on 2005 in december on the 13th and two days later on the 15th we have global energy partners that's minted in boston if you remember lev parnas uh, and those guys are, are the main ones behind global energy partners but there's a lot of different different companies different names they'll use sometimes alias uh, and then in Delaware, Chicago unit acquisition, Donald J. Trump. This is actually on his financial uh, disclosure, that one there. Um, you know, and again, Global Energy Partners in 2011 and Trump Ocean Club of Panama, the opening of, of that, uh, that particular place there. And of course you have 2019, I think we have this in, later in the film, won't we'll go into that one there using the Trump alias. I'm right now I'm focusing on Trump's own company names that show the connection to the very man that we will later in the doc in this in this uh, film share with you uh, the aliases of John Miller that has been allegedly associated to President Trump. Uh, we have here in 2009 President Trump. Uh, of course, he wasn't president then. Donald Trump, uh, Delaware. Trump Hotel Management is minted two days later. Summer Breeze Services in Delaware, Paul J. Manafort, as well as a day later, uh, uh, Cyprus, uh, Acnet Trading LTD, Paul J. Manafort and Rick Gates. That's, an, of course, an offshore company being done. And all in the space of about five days, then we have again uh, in Florida, Bay Life Technologies in Valrico, Florida, uh, Brandon, this is Tampa's third red flag. Paul E. Davis is on this, and as well as David E. Denison, and that is believed to be another alias uh, that is being used by Trump. That's allegedly being used by Trump there. Uh, so we have this one there. Then you have, you move up to 2013, uh, Latvia Global Energy Producers. Uh, this is, and when you have the little asterisks out there, the original author of all this material, that represents organized crime. All right, Latvia, the foreign country over there in far, the East Europe there, at the same time, Thor Investments in uh, Collierville, uh, Tennessee by Fred Strunk. Fred Strunk, also the man that uh, was involved in the underground caves and marijuana caves in uh, and uh, right around Lebanon, Tennessee. Then we had here in September the 12th of 2013, Marks Products International uh, by President Trump, or uh, wasn't president at the time, Donald Trump at that time there. So again, just in a very small window of frames there, of time frame there, all these guys knowing one another, opening up all these companies here. Uh, then you really you, you start getting into the major issues now because now we're dealing with all right now the president is in office Donald Trump is in office now we're looking at September um, uh, excuse me not this one here that was from another point I was bringing out but uh, if we look here in August of 2014 so I apologize he was he's president yeah there but not here uh, this, I'm sorry, I was looking, wanting to focus on this one in 2014. Uh, Trump mints a company called Trump Miami Resort Management on the 28th of August, 2014. The exact same day, California partnership was minted in Florida, West Palm Beach by David Correa. Uh, Cor uh, Cor Coria. And we got to remember, David Correa, one of Giuliani's friends. In fact, Trump was the one that recommended Giuliani represent uh, uh, David is David Coria as well as Igor Fruman and uh, Lev Parnas and this is part of the Ukraine Russian connections here uh, and then Trump also the very next day mints in Delaware marks Jupiter uh, another company minted under Trump's name again once again linking him to these very people uh, here now now this one I go into even deeper later in the film but it's more under the alias names of Trump but I thought you should note this one here. It was uh, right before the president is elected. And I thought I'd actually had this in there. Maybe I did and I forgot to mention it, but you'll see it anyway. This is during the time where Trump's plane is landing the same time that uh, Dmitry Robololev's plane is landing. And of course it went into the news, big stir up about it. And, 
And, uh, but yet both men denying that they met during the times. There's a plane landing in Las Vegas uh, right around October the 30th. Uh, and, uh, and then there's, of course, uh, at that rally, the Trump rally, then the Trump rally in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And again, uh, Robolalev's plane is there. Of course, Robolalev lives in Charlotte and works out of Charlotte, so that's not anything unusual in my opinion. But nonetheless, October 30th of 2016 in Moscow, Giorgio, I can't even pronounce his last name, R-T-S-K-H-I-L-A-D-Z-E, email to Michael Cohen on Trump Moscow tapes, all right? Same day, Dmitry Rubolev, is his plane is with Trump in Las Vegas, and then the very next day, Trump publicly states that WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. But drop down, you only have a couple of days later, Donald Trump mints a company, Trump Street Holdings Incorporated, he actually mints two of these companies, and Donald J. Trump for presidents, seven days before the elections and he's minting a company called donald j trump for president like the guy wrote writes in his thing here are you awake why is this going on uh and then of course two days later and all these other companies they matter we have dmitry robololev trump plane lands in charlotte and as we go further down you got to keep this in mind remember this because right now we see these two companies that are minted here with Trump, but as we go further down in the investigation, when we're looking at the aliases, at the same time we'll be looking at the planes that had landed, you'll also see where Dmitry Robololev, also the exact same time that Donald Trump is minting these two companies, Robololev, Dmitry Robololev, also is minting companies as well. Like crazy he's minting them. All right, and I'm gonna share with you one more, and again, like I said, this is just a drop in the bucket, okay? So we have right here on uh, 2017 in uh, February, Paul Manafort meeting with uh, Kalimnik uh, or Deripaska in Madrid, Spain. Uh, and at the exact same time, nearly two days later after that meeting, Donald J Trump Jr. mints a company in Delaware called THC Miami Restaurant Hospitality member. And then, uh, 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 let's see, what is it, a day or so, or no, only one day later, again, Dmitry Robololev, uh, he is minting the, uh, in Delaware, uh, Alivo Incorporated. It is just constantly where we see all these things. Let's continue with the video and see more. How many of you guys remember, though, uh, this article here from Newsweek, the internet remembers John Barron and Trump's other aliases after Republicans criticized Mitt Romney's fake Twitter account. Mitt Romney in the video at one point, and I just clipped that, I just captured that one part where he says this, Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud, his promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. I kind of got a chuckle when I saw that one there. It reminds me of some other universities that are popping up that are probably just as phony. We won't go into that. And I'm not a Mitt Romney supporter either, by the way, just in case someone thinks that. But the issue, though, are these aliases. As we started off in the broadcast, I shared with you John Miller, that a alias there. This is when it gets very interesting. As you can see on here, this is back from 2012. And of course, this name, John Miller, that's been associated to President Trump after this fake interview call, is on our timeline of LLCs and corporations that are being put together. Now, in this timeline, you have to understand, it's, it's very tedious to go through these types of documents. But what it is, is when certain things take place in the world, or timing, time frames of things, you will start to find a pattern, as the man that first revealed this to me, he said it's like having the ability to look at someone's personal checkbook. You can see what they're doing, where they're spending money, who they're spending it with. Well, John Miller, in his alias, on November the 26th of 2012, he minted a company both in Florida and Delaware, Oak River Property Management, Austin, Texas, under the alias of John Miller. Well, it just seems, is this a coincidence or what? Because actually on the same day, we have two 
that Columbus painting in Sarasota, Florida, uh, which is in relation to Victor Vickelsberg, all right, and Andrew Entrader, who were both charged by the Mueller Council, and their office happens to be on the same block as Trump Tower. Not to mention on the exact same day, we have another company that was minted called MC Brooklyn Holdings by Paul J. Manafort, possibly connected to Michael Cohen as well. Now that happens to be one of President Trump's former campaign advisors. And of course, everybody knows Michael Cohen was the attorney for the president. That's not to say on the same day and one day afterwards about Blue Sky Forest Products or Blue Sky Land Management Construction or Strategic Acquisition Groups in Knoxville. You will find that there is a consistency in the types of names in these corporations. And even though I may not name who owns these or they may not be significant in this, they are all linked together and there are far more hundreds and hundreds of documents that actually do that. The individual that give me this information though is only giving me a small scope in which to work with but has hundreds of more pages that can be cross-referenced and tie all these corporations in. Now, it was redacted what the $2 million bank loan was at the time, but I do know that President Trump has been heavily involved in getting loans and fraudulent loans from Deutsche Bank. Guess everybody knows what's going on with Deutsche Bank, don't they? And not just President Trump, also Paul Manafort and others as well, doing a lot of loans with Deutsche Bank, right? Now, on the 30th though, three days later, Strategic Global Assets is minted in Boca Raton, Florida by none other than Lev Parnas and David Correa. Now, that's kind of interesting. As the author notes here, the network's Ponzi scheme, money laundering into real estate via mortgage fraud. But my point that I wanted to share with you here is the consistency of the John Miller case here. Looking at yet another one here. This here, all the way in the modern times of 2018. And by the way, I have many, many, many cases where the name John Miller in states all over the country, especially Delaware, uh, California, Nevada, Tennessee, and Florida, John Miller pops up everywhere. And it seems though that that alias of John Miller there, the guy that's using the name John Miller, he always pops up with these same set of friends that Trump does actually know. Like in this case here, if you go back on, uh, what is that, January, February, March, April, April the 9th of 2018, the FBI did a search warrant, the collection of evidence from Michael Cohen, the attorney of President Trump, right? And Trump publicly criticized the FBI. Well, the very next day, some strange things began to happen. Different companies began to open, like Blue Sky Entertainment. Yes, it was on Fort Nine. Uh, it was actually when it opened in Marina del Rey. But then on the 10th, we had Nova Marketing, which is a company by Victor Vickelsberg. And him and Trump are pretty much tied at the hip, but that's a lot of documentation that I won't be including in this particular uh, broadcast. And then the very next day on April the 11th of 2018, DSHAZ LLC Pinecrest John A. Miller, again, the very Trump alias that President Trump uses. And isn't it kind of odd that on the same day Global Energy Producers is minted in Delaware by Lev Parnas and Eagle Fruman? You know, those are the guys that are represented by Rudy Giuliani. They're also the guys that happen to have been arrested and they're involved in a probe when it probe when it comes to Ukraine and their connections or their alleged connections to President Trump. Well, we've also got strategic solutions and services in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but then there comes on the 12th of April, Hugo Partners 1 in New Orleans. Well, that's a different issue altogether, but this is where the crime family comes involved in that. And it's a different topic altogether, which I, if I decide to continue on with this investigation, I'll deal with things in separate cases to build it up. Even Khashoggi, all these guys, you'd be surprised the connection and the stealth money trail that connects 
all so many of these different people hmm we will discuss that later anyway as I put a note in there myself when the heat is on they got to move money and of course when the FBI began to search Michael Cohen that's one of the reasons why I believe these companies begin to be popping up to get money moving for people to do different things right now I want to bring up here this is NPR back in February 12th of 2018 they were looking at George Papadopoulos the connections in the Russian investigation in fact it says here the name George Papadopoulos became associated with Donald Trump in March of 2016 when then presidential candidate listed him among his foreign policy team now nearly two years later Papadopoulos has pled guilty to lying to the FBI and is believed to be the reason for the start of the Russian investigation and of course President Trump distances himself from him and says no there's no connection to him whatsoever hmm what do you know though once again we have April the 11th of 2016 isn't it interesting let's drop back to two, two places again there remember that famous date there in the month of April April 11 2018 and April 11th Global Energy Lev Parnas all those guys there and of course we already knew that John Miller was opening up the DSHA Z LLC in Pinecrest that Trump alias there well it just so happens he also opened up a company called Boral Resources in Roswell Georgia by the way if you're wondering about where John A. Miller lives at, in my research, I tried to find the guy. He's got all kinds of addresses everywhere, but the one I think that really intrigued me the most was the one in Gulf Breeze, Florida. His address is a UPS store. Believe it or not, that's exactly right. Now, I use a UPS mailbox myself in order to receive my mail in, but I don't claim that on the corporation papers as saying that's part of my company to begin with. But John Miller does. But he's got all kinds of addresses all over the United States. It's amazing where, how many places this guy is able to live. Anyway, though, he happens to open up the company Boral Resources in Roswell, Georgia, and again, it's by John Miller. But remember... President Trump said there's no connection between him and George Papadopoulos other than the fact that he was going to be part of his team. Well, it just so happens the very next day, George Papadopoulos meets again with Professor Joseph Mefsud, and that happened on April the 12th. Wonder why? And then, of course, on the 12th, we also had the Speedway Hotel that popped up and opened up, and there's other dates that go with that as well. Different companies, different times, different reasons. Let's drop down, though. Again, to look a little bit more of these John Miller aliases here, we have two more that the president allegedly, if his name is being used as the alias is John Morrill, we do have, again, the on the July the 27th of 2016, there is that Borrell name again, just like you had up here in Delaware in 2016. Borrell Resources, Roswell, Georgia. John Miller, once again, opening up that company there or minting that company we would say there on the July the 27th as well 143 investments was minted in Jacksonville Florida by two aliases John Daly and John Miller once again hmm interesting isn't it and of course exactly the same time Trump publicly warns that WikiLeaks is going to expose Hillary Democrats Russia and they're all their emails the DNC isn't that interesting and maybe that's why we had to have all these John Miller companies pop up at that time of course on July 27th the first time Russian uh, GRU personnel spear phishing on the server with Hillary's emails and of course the man that give me this information to share this information with me clearly believes hundred percent that it is a collusion between the Russians and that of the president and many many others and as I said he told me when he first stumbled onto this information he wasn't looking for President Trump it's just President Trump seemed to pop up in all the names how many of you guys remember Maria Butina 
The Russian who conspired to infiltrate conservative U.S. political groups sentenced to 18 months in jail. She finally got released, went back to Russia. I'm kind of glad for her that she did. And I personally believed and I reported in her defense from the very beginning that I felt like that she was just being used by the Democrats. Somebody they wanted to point the finger at. I had no idea that there was actually a paper trail that could allegedly put her as part of this master plan, money laundering trail, organized crime. Take a look here. Interesting. Back in uh, February of 2016, while President Trump was running for the President of the United States there when this all began, we had three companies minted right there, 9th, 10th, and 12th, strategic beginning in all their names, and believe it or not, they all do matter in this scheme of things. It's just I don't have that full information because it's not all been disclosed to me. But Strategic Supply Chain, Hickson, uh, Strategic Solutions, Cleveland, Tennessee, Strategic Capital Management, Knoxville, and I say it, they all connect. It is, I have to say, it is alleged. I don't know for sure. But then comes these interesting ones. Now, this is already public knowledge. In South Dakota, Bridges LLC, Maria Butina. It's attributed to her. And of course, the Democrats went wild. But what people do not know is the connection to people that are actually known to President Trump with her, such as in the case of Paul Manafort, President Trump's very campaign manager. And of course, in Delaware, he had he had taken and minted a company called Baylor Holdings. All right. And Paul J. Manafort. We also had Fred Strunk. You're going to find some interesting things about him if you don't already remember as well. Um, on February the 11th, he opened up a company called Akrut Technologies. Fred Strunk. Remember, he's from Lebanon, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Fred Strunk was the guy that... All, the, all those of you that might remember, he's the one that got uh, busted for having a huge marijuana uh, underground cave under his house in Tennessee. In fact, that's one thing I learned about this whole deal to begin with. Tennessee had become a major area for drug, drugs coming in and those drugs being distributed to go out through the rest of the United States. But Fred was more on the low end of that totem pole, if you ask me, when it comes to that. Um, but anyway, and then we got all these blue sky companies that are also allegedly connected to what's going on here. Again, Maria Butina, Hugo Services. That supposedly, from what I have been told, is again connected to the, uh, to the drug trafficking cartels. But again, Maria Butina, Bridges LLC. Paul J. Manafort, Baylor Holdings, all these within a two-day period in Fred Strunk. And these people, the connections to President Trump. Paul Manafort, if I'm not mistaken, at that time was the campaign manager for President Trump. Interesting. Or is it just coincidence? And there you have right there Fred Strunk, mastermind, shares secrets of infamous pot cave. Now he's becoming a celebrity. Fred Strunk is out of prison and explaining his marvel of underground engineering. Interesting. Here comes another one. And of course, this gets interesting as well. Stealth wealthy Franklin Haney built real estate empire with government help. And those of you that know anything about him, he's also come up in this issue when it comes to Trump, mainly because of a uh, $1 million donation that, uh, that uh, he gave to Trump and faces scrutiny in Alabama at a, for an Alabama nuclear plant. All right. Well, here, Mister, it says here, uh, longtime Democrat donor Franklin L. Haney, but he donated to Trump, right, a million dollars to the Republican Party, who, with his wife uh, in line, has poured 1.1 million into the effort to reelect President Barack Obama. Well, that was back in 2012. But as you move forward in time, now he's given a million dollars to, to Trump and faces scrutiny in Alabama nuclear plant. Now, one side he's for Obama, the next time he's for Trump. That's kind of weird, isn't it? But like I said, 
Don't kid yourself. These guys all work together. Let's take a look at this right here just to give you an idea. In January of 2017, this is where you really get some interesting stuff here. In Delaware, two different companies are opened by, the, by, the, by a man named Dmitry Rubolalev. Now the R-Y in Russian has got a U sound with the Y. It's not like, like that. It's pronounced like a U sound. So he opens up two companies, Alivo Maryland Project Holdings in Concord, North Carolina. And he also opens up another one, Alivo Project Holdings, also in Concord, Cal uh, excuse me, North Carolina. Now, two days later, Donald J. Trump, his revocable trust, adds a trustee to that revocable trust. And, of course, the, the person that originally gave me this information also includes El Chapo to Brooklyn, New York. Uh, he brings in a lot of things about the organized uh, drug cartel, the crime families that are involved there, because he has a lot more information that I don't have at my disposal that he alleges connects them all together. And in fact, he shared with me that this is where a lot of the money has come from to be able to carry out uh, the things that they're doing as they move this money around. Now, also, on the 20th, this is three days later, Phoenix Entertainment, Cleveland, Tennessee, Franklin L. Haney. What do you know? Donald J. Trump's got a revocable trust, adds a trustee during this time. We have Dmitry Rubolilev opens up two corporation and Franklin Haney that gives a million dollars to Trump at this time is also got a connection in there. You move down further. <laughs> uh, you got all these companies in the middle which allegedly are all connected to what's going on here but I focus more on the names that are connected that people think that either are connected to President Trump or they think that they're not connected. In the case here, in North Carolina, Alivo U.S. Holdings, right? Uh, minted as well by Dmitry Robololev. Also, Trump attorney Michael Cohen received the email from Alina uh, Polikova, or the office of Putin's chef, uh, or excuse me, Putin's chief of staff, Dmitry Peskov, regarding moving forward on the Moscow Trump Tower project. By the way, it was a $4 million deposit that had to be placed. I think that was just to pay the fees to the Russian government. On the 23rd of January, we have in Florida, minted EMH 100 LLC in Palm Beach, Florida by none other than Michael Cohen. Uh, we have also, again, that Boral material, Materials. Remember, if you remember, Who's the one that does that type of company right there? It's minted in Delaware, but it's uh, supposedly in Florida. None other than the alias of John A. Miller. And at the very bottom, we have in Tennessee, Tressler and Company Holdings uh, is by attorney Todd Tressler and Fred Strunk of Lebanon, Tennessee. It's just strange how that President Trump seems to be falling in the same timelines of all these companies and yet allegedly has no connection whatsoever to these people. Weird, isn't it? Well, let's look at a little bit more. Let's look at some of the documents and the records here. We're going to now take a look at Trump's former campaign chairman, the tight ties, uh, who has the tight ties to Putin. This article right here was on the Politico. It says the White House is now trying to claim that Paul Manafort, who reportedly worked to further Vladimir Putin's interests in the U.S. and overseas, was only a bit, uh, uh, a bit player, excuse me, in the president's run for office. <laughs> it's amazing, right? But I want you to take a look at some of the documents here. This here is uh, from, uh, called the Offshore Alert. Now we're going to really back up in time, right? We're going to look at some of these connections here and why President Trump was trying to distance himself from Paul Manafort. But the problem is, as I've already showed you, President Trump, everywhere Paul Manafort pops up in the, in the scheme of things, and we've got to back up a little bit more here. Uh, like in this case here, you got Paul Manafort. Uh, wait a minute. Do, 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 do. John Miller. we got Paul Manafort on this page. You're going to see him anyway. 
Uh, we'll go. We'll go forward. Don't need to go back. All right. Let's just go forward because I think I have it all forward anyway. All right. So we get into this document right here. This is uh, a case uh, number 0131 in 2014. The Grand Court of the Cayman Islands Financial Service Division, Pericles Emerging Market Partners, a partnership registered in the Cayman Islands of March 26th of 2007. Uh, and that company, it says here, is situated at the uh, Intertrust Corporate Services of the Cayman Islands, 190 uh, El uh, Elgin Avenue, Georgetown, Grand Cayman uh, Islands. All right. Now, who's that company by? That company is the day-to-day -day operations partnership and search of the appropriate Delaware registry has revealed that the status of the managers in Delaware is considered to be a, a uh, canceled voided, which is a Delaware limited partnership, which has failed to pay its annual tax for the period of three years from its due date. Now, if you drop down in the yellow right there, it says the initial members of that investment committee were U.S. citizens Rick Gates, Rick Davis, and Paul Manafort. Davis Manafort Incorporated, a company incorporated in Delaware, serves as an advisor to the manager as regards to the partnership. The partnership Confidential Offering Memorandum dated December of 2006 describes Davis Manafort as a business development and public affairs consultancy uh, and partnership which is located in, in Virginia in the United States. Davis Manafort was described in the OM as having successfully developed business transactions in areas such as energy, industry development, and telecommunications and technology. All right. Now, if you notice though, and this, this is the same document, all I'm doing is adding news clip as we go on though. This was uh, brought out by the political reporter by Gideon Riznek. Trump group throws former campaign official Rick Gates under the bus after the Bob Mueller indictment. Hmm. Remember all these other, remember even Bob Mueller pops up in, our, in, our, uh, in, in this investigation here. All right, so Rick Gates gets thrown under the bus. But remember, Rick Gates is also named in this company here, this Pericles company, that is actually going to try to, uh, or will not just try, they will literally purchase a Ukrainian company, a, tele, uh, a, a cable company, television company, in other words, uh, in order to carry out certain businesses inside of Ukraine, which one of those would be to help elect Yanukovych, but then also later use the same telecoms communication company to bring about a Maidan coup inside the nation and topple Yanukovych. That's after uh, all the both Democrats and Republicans, even those that were not in office, were very busy in siphoning the money out of Ukraine. Anyway, it goes on to say, Rick, Rick Gates on November 14, 2007, and the partnership intended to make investments in various enterprises in specific economic sectors located in the cities in Ukraine, namely Kiev, Odessa, and Maripol. All right, continuing on in the yellow green, the next paragraph, the intended investments were to be made in retail, real estate development, and management cable television, media and road construction and infrastructure sectors of the economy. Let's drop down further as I have it highlighted as well. However, save for one investment into Ukrainian company, Black Sea Cable, that's BSC, and telecommunication sector providing cable and internet services discussed in the more detail below, these investments did not uh, event, uh, eventuate. Rick Gates had regularly vis visited the offices of the petitioners, representatives in Moscow during, the, during late 2007. The fund plan been presented as an investment proposal for the partnership following the meetings. The petitioners' representatives raised numerous concerns in correspondence by telephone with both Rick Gates and Paul Manafort about the various investments proposed. All right. Now, one of the other guys that's mentioned in this uh, probe is none other than Rick Davis, which was John McCain's crony. He was the uber lobbyist at the campaign helm, right? Remember that? Uh, and in this article right here, Rick Davis arranged a cocktail meet and greet with McCain and Russian businessman Oleg Dur uh, Durapaska. You're going to see Oleg also in these documents that I have as well. 
a controversial, uh, so controversial that the U.S. has revoked his visa, and at an economic conference in Switzerland, Davis lobbying firm was trying to secure business with the Russians at the time, while the firm was already representing a uh, competing political interest in Ukraine. Seven months later, in August of 2006, Davis was present again at a social gathering that was also attended by McCain and Deripaska, this time in Montenegro, and, uh, excuse me, another Eastern European country in which Davis' firm was working. <laughs> Interesting, wasn't it, isn't it? But if you go on into this court document that is bringing a lawsuit against these men, that is, against uh, the Pericles uh, organization that is owned by uh, Paul Manafort, Rick Davis, and Rick Gates. Uh, did I get the names right here? I get, get it. Sometimes it gets backwards. There's so many names in my head. Uh, it goes on to say the petitioner and Atomax have together, therefore, paid a total of seven million three hundred fifty thousand in capital commitments. The MF commitments payments of the MF commitments were wired to the U.S. Bank account of Pericles Capital Partners, LLC, which is Paul Manafort, right? After uh, going down to the next part of our highlighted in number 26, by mid-summer of 2008, there were clear indications of the coming world uh, financial crisis, and at this time, the petitioner was only limited partner in the partnership, which had made only one investment, which was Black Sea Cable. In September of 2008, the petitioner informed GP that it was suspending further investments with the partnership. The partnership would be would be wound up the petitioner and would be replaced by another limited partner, which would assume the petitioner's obligations. That would be in a wind down of the company. But during 2010 and 2011, the petitioner's representatives communicated with Rick Gates to inquire as to the progress of the wind down and was informed that the GP was looking for available opportunities to sell investments in Black Sea Cable. In addition, Rick Gates informed the petitioner by email dated September 17, 2010, that the audit of the partnership was underway and was required to be filed by the end of 2010. Well, guess what? The man never got his money. And oddly enough, that exact same amount of money that 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 this man had invested with them pops up in another place in another company in Tennessee. Don't have that information in front of me, but I've actually seen that before. So it gets very, very interesting. So here's what's interesting though. President Trump has tried to distance himself from uh, Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, and understandably so, because they got caught up in this scandal. But back in the same time that Pericles was making these transactions to purchase with Russian, with the Russians, uh, Diapraska, one of the guys involved in that, uh, and also Putin Chef, I forget how you pronounce his name, but he was also involved in this. Uh, while they were doing all this, Trump later pushes these guys away in this purchase of Black Sea Cable, but at the exact same time this is all going on, oddly enough, we find out that Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, they met a company in July 14th of 2008 called Global Sites, and then Rick Gates mints another company called uh, Jemina LLC, same day, and on the same day, the alias name John Miller, which is supposedly the alias of Donald Trump, allegedly, mints a company called Docking Bay 94 in Pompano Beach and Coconut Creek. Oddly enough, this company here is some kind of comic book store. And supposedly, and I've looked them up, they're not related to one to the other, and yet it's still owned by John Miller. I think it's just a front. It's just a front, and it appears to be part of a money laundering scheme. Now, oddly enough, right when these guys opened these three companies the day before, isn't it kind of strange that Trump sells his home at that same time, too? He sells his mansion and 6.3 acres that he got for $41 million on an auction for an unheard of price ever of $95 million to Dmitry Rubolilev who later bulldozes the house to the ground. And I wish I'd have put the pictures of that in here, but I actually did. No one could understand why this happened. 
Now, he did bulldoze it to the ground, a beautiful mansion, by the way. He bulldozed it to the ground, subdivided it into three lots, and he sold those off. It took him many years to do it, and he actually made a profit. But even on that transaction, you can follow the money trail and how that when he sells it all, all these LLCs start popping up and all these guys' name once again. It's unreal, friends. Un and, and this can't be coincidence. There's no way these guys can have this much coincidence. And yet, Dmitry Rabolov has swore he's never met Trump. Even though he bought his house, he said he's never met him. It's going to get more interesting. Watch what happens. All right, July the 18th of 2008. This is where it gets interesting. All right, this is only a few days later, right? A couple of days later, you got blue sky, oil and gas pops up in Nevada. It's related, allegedly related to these guys, but I'm going to focus on names that I can give to you. Trinity Wellness is open in Coral Gables, Florida by none other than Michael Cohen, Donald Trump's attorney. And Miller Design and Construction in Jupiter, Florida is minted by who? John Miller. Wow. How does John Miller, this alias that Trump said he doesn't even, you know, well, you couldn't say that Trump doesn't know him because if he claims to be Trump's publicist, even if we don't know who the guy really is, he's either got to be Trump or he's got to be somebody that Trump really knows really well. And he's also heavily involved in all these other guys as well. You can't just fabricate this stuff. It, it, there's just no way. Okay. Now, here we go again. Trump, Ukraine, and the path to the impeachment, inquiry, and a timeline. Let me show some of this to you. Now, and I have to bring this up for, for a couple of reasons here. July 10th, top Ukrainian officials, including Zelensky's aide, Andrei Yermak, meet at the White House with Energy Secretary Rick Perry, then the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, Kurt Volker, the U.S. representatives of the Ukraine negotiations, and Gordon Salmon, U.S. ambassador to the European Union. On July the 18th, uh, Trump blocks nearly 400 million in military aid. According to the Washington Post, Taylor, in his written testimony, he was on a video. All right, he blocks that on July the 18th. Now, that's important to know. This is the timeline of when Trump actually blocks aid to Ukraine. It's already been approved by Congress, right? Office of Management and Budget chimed in and said, that she was from OMB and that her boss had instructed her not to approve any additional spending of the security assistance for Ukraine until further notice. According to Taylor, she said the directive had come from the president of the chief of staff to OMB. All right. President. President of what? President of the United States, I assume, right? Well, here's what's interesting. July the 18th. Is anything going on at that time? Well, I want you to read this note up here first, too. Our evidence financially ties Trump to El Chapo and Dmitry Rubolilev. El Chapo, the Sonola cartel, want to return on their money. Now, I've not got to see all this documentation yet, but I have been told that the connection through all this, these LLCs and limited liability partnerships, etc., is so deep when it comes to the drug cartels, specifically the Sonola cartel. And the congressperson, or excuse me, the congressman that I spoke to earlier today, or excuse me, not today, I apologize. The congressman that I spoke to a couple of days ago confirmed they knew about a meeting that had gone on in the Capitol over the Sonola cartel and wasn't surprised that there could be a connection between all these people, Dimitri, the president, and the, a lot of these other people mentioned in here, and the Sonola cartel. Okay, that's El Chapo's cartel. All right, so anyway, we go on to look at this. So Trump holds Congress, uh, holds, put a, puts a hold on the Congress approved, approved military aid on July the 18th, as I read to you in the article. And then the very next day, Paradise at Blue Sky LLC, is minted by Dmitry Rubolilev. All right. A few days later, we get several other companies minted that allegedly are also connected, including one in Washington, D.C. called Blue Sky 
an, uh, in, uh, uh, innovative solutions, Blue Sky Capital Properties. And then on the 25th, a call from Trump to Ukraine President Zelensky encouraging him to do this investigation into Joe Biden's son. Right? That's on the 25th. Now, on the 31st, Trump makes a phone call to Putin. All right? And on the same day, July 31st of 2019, in Delaware, Global Energy Producers, there's... I'm not sure if the minting is on the 411.18 or if it's two different mintings because there's so many different mintings with the same name. But Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman are attached to that. We have also on the September the 11th of 2019, Trump lifts the hold on the 391 million military aid to Ukraine. And the very next day, again in Delaware and also in California, Paradise at Blue Sky LLC is minted by none other than Dim Dmitry Robololev. And he's got connections, of course, he comes from Ukraine. By the way, he comes from Ukraine with a very shady past, too. Uh, it is alleged in the court records over there that he had someone murdered, and the person that was going to testify of this ended up changing their testimony. The man got off, flees to America, and spends all of his millions and billions here instead. All right, also, on the, on the 12th of September, uh, oh, we already did that one there. The 26th of September, Global Visions Energy Partners is minted. And this is a El Chapo company. Now, El Chapo's in prison, so I don't know who's actually doing the running of it. Uh, but as I said, there is a lot about him that matters in all this documentation. Let's move forward. Global Energy Producers LLC. This is the very company. This is a court document here uh, before the Federal Elections Commission, the Campaign uh, Legal Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, Margaret Christ, I guess, is the one uh, petitioning uh, the, them about this and is petitioning specifically Global Energy Producers LLC, who is owned by Igor Fruman and Lev Parnas and a John Doe, Jane Doe, and other persons who created and operated the Global Energy Producers. A lot of John Doe's and Jane Doe's. Interesting, huh? If you go on to read on here, it says on March 26, 2018, the Forum Daily published an article in Russian titled, A Russian-Speaking Businessman Took Part in the Trump Meeting with Potential Donors of His 2020 Campaign, describing how businessmen named Igor Fruman participated in an event President Trump's campaign on March 3rd, 2018 at President Trump's Mar-a-Lago Resort in Palm Beach, Florida. It says here, in the 2016 elections, this is, being, this is a quote right by Igor Fruman. I made donations to Trump's election campaign fund and now a year after taking over the presidency, Trump decided it was right again to invite and turn to his supporters, said Igor Fruman, who has supported the Republican Party for many years. Think about that. Now, look at some more interesting stuff here, right? January 17th of 2017. All right. And some of this is going to be repeat, some of it's not. Charged by the Mueller team, Concord Management, Yergene Prigozhin. That's Putin's financial chef, right? That's the guy there. And I don't know if I pronounced his name right, so please forgive me if I don't do it right. On the same day, January 17th, 2017, Dmitry Robololev, opens three different companies, mints three different companies, Alivo Delaware Project Holdings, Alivo Maryland Project Holdings, Alivo Project Holdings uh, as well, all of these in Concord, North Carolina. Same day, Donald Trump, revocable trust, second amendment to his revocable trust is made. On the exact same day as well, there are two loans to Paul Manafort, one of 6.5 million, and the other on the 23rd of January for 16 million. All right, FS 
BK, Chicago, Stephen Kalk. On the 18th, the next day, Genesis Cap agrees to withdraw foreclosure on 377 Union Street of Paul Manafort. All right, now there's a redaction about the money that's being moved around on this. So there's information that the original person that shared this with me knows that he's redacted for the time being. And by the way, he's very much open to a complete uh, investigation by the FBI. I need to make that clear. On January the 18th, 2017, in Tennessee, Harvest Time Global, uh, a company owned by Escarbo Framing. We also have, uh, dropping down to the 19th, Donald J. Trump Revocable Trust, a trustee was added. And also on January the 20th, Trump, Trump Presidential Inauguration, Gallus Entertainment. And at the exact same time in North Carolina, Alivo USA Holdings, just as a reminder, by Dmitry Robololev. Now, when all this stuff really began to hit the fan over Parnas, over um, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, David uh, Correa, these guys here, it really caused a major mess for the President of the United States. Because if anybody knew the connections like I've been sharing with you here, they would begin to put pieces together. Now, the gentleman that actually is a source to me on this, and he tells me that there's quite a few people that have worked on this project with him, um, he has, he's, he's made it quite clear. Uh, actually, I lost the thought where I was going to go with that. Anyway. Uh, but at any, at any rate, in, in the case of all the heat that was on the president here, there's one thing that he picked up on, and he didn't share this with me at first, but I picked up on it myself, and of course talking to him about it, I realized that he had also figured out the same thing here too, that there's a lot of communication when it goes on, even in the public eye, between the president of the United States and President Putin or other world leaders, sometimes this information is a coded speech. Um, if you look here on the, on the screen here to the right here, the state officials dissolved company long before the $500,000 deal with Giuliani. I want you to hold that thought in mind. Half million dollar deal with Giuliani. And that, that deal was the state officials in Florida may have dissolved a company linked to the Ukrainian American businessman facing campaign finance charges long before Rudy Giuliani's consulting firm reportedly was paid a half a million dollars to provide business and legal advice. You need to hold on to that thought because I'm going to share with you about information that when I worked with the CIA and how another attorney also had a retainer that ridiculously high working with people that were involved in illegal campaign contributions. Okay? The company in question is called the Fraud Guarantee. <laughs> well, that, that was one that I shared with you earlier. Uh, that was founded by the CEO, Lev Parnas. Right? It also says, who allegedly worked with Giuliani to urge Ukrainian officials to investigate Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden. But when all this began to come to light, if uh, you know, oh, I, I know what I was going to say earlier too. The source that I had told me that when the Mueller investigation was going on, they never were given the scope to search these companies that could have linked all these people together. They have more of a, 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 a withal to be able to find out the details of these corporations because those that are open in Delaware, it's very strict guidelines. It's very difficult to figure out who owns what when it comes to Delaware. But anyway, President Trump makes a very odd phone call to the Russian president and he offers helping in fighting the Serbian wildfires. And after knowing the information I know now, I cannot help, and it's, and it's only a conjecture, but I could not help that it was coded information because it says President Donald Trump has offered help to the Russians in combating wildfires raging in Siberia. The Russian embassy said on Wednesday, right? And he's dropped down and says, President Vladimir Putin appreciated the gesture and would take Trump up on the offer if needed. For now, Putin told Trump that Russian military aircraft was 
were deployed to control the situation. Now, it's not to say that there's not a fire going on in Siberia at the time. That was very true. But a lot of critics also noted, though, why did President Trump even bother to call? It seemed to be unusual. Well, it is unusual. And I think, in my own personal opinion, they were discussing the situation because of the connections between Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, and of course David Correa, and, and, and all the men that are related to President Putin that are related to President Trump. It was a fire. It was a wildfire. And a wildfire they needed to put out. All right. Let's take a look here, 2019. Um, it says here in the note at the top, our evidence financially ties Trump to El Chapo and Dmitry Rubolilev. El Chapo, the Sonola cartel, wants to return on his money. I think we actually talked about this one here, unless he's just put the same note in a different place. Uh, in July 18th of 2019, Trump, okay, yeah, I think we did. We've already done all this here. Innovative Washington, okay, Trump, Ukraine. Sometimes though, I put the extra one in there because it'll have something else on there that I didn't have in the one I did originally. So yes, on July 31st of 2019, Trump and Putin have a phone call. The exact same day, July 31st, Global Energy Producers, Alev Parnas. Yeah, I think we did all of this. Trump Holdings lifted up on, yes, 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 yes. Global Energy Partners. Okay, yes, we've already been through all of this right here as well. I must have just put it in by accident, doubling in there. Anyway, so the straw donor complained to the FEC Global Energy Producers of LLC, July 25th of 2018. Uh, they filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission about top donors to pro-Trump super PAC after discovering evidence that the Russian-speaking Ukrainian businessman named Igor Fruman and Russian-born businessman named Lev Parnas may have created a Global Energy Producers LLC as a shell corporation for the purpose of anonymously funneling six figures to the super PAC. All right, now watch what happens here. <laughs> October 9, 2019, Fruman and Parnas were arrested on criminal campaign finance charges in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York uh, filed. Uh, and by the way, I don't have that information up here, but I can tell you that some of that money was funded. 50000 was funneled into uh, the governor of the state of Florida, DeSantis, and also in... Um, I forget the name of the congressman that that was also, also funneled to. I forget now the name of it. Anyway, now we're going to take a look at some of the religious entities that are involved as well in the rec in this uh, illegal um, illegal things that are going on here. And this is interesting. Some of these companies, though, I don't know if they really even exist but they're using Christian corporations, or at least the names of those Christian corporations. But in some cases, I have actually discovered uh, in one particular case, and I don't have this one up here, that they are connected to the very group that is very close to the President of the United States, one of these evangelical groups here. I will not call their name. But here on January the 17th, uh, of 2017, there was a, a company minted called Harvest Christian Coaching in Orange Park, Florida. Keep that in mind. Also, the next day in Tennessee, Harvest Hospitality Group in Knoxville was open. And then we get all these blue sky companies, once again, that allegedly are all connected to what we're talking about here. And also on the same day, as we mentioned earlier, Alivo in Delaware, Maryland, and Alivo Project Holdings by Dmitry Robololev. Uh, we've already spoke about that, the, reverse, uh, the revocable trust of Donald Trump all going on, but it's the fact that this Harvest Christian Coaching was also opened and supposedly with direct ties. Genesis Cap agrees to withdraw foreclosure. We spoke about that already as well. And then we move on. On July 14th of 2008, going back in history, this is an interesting one. Harvest Institute for Biblical Studies in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think it was a front uh, uh, nonprofit organization that was created. And, uh, and, and, and if it exists, you got me on it. But then you had also Trinity Consulting in Orlando. There's a redaction on that. Don't know why. He's not revealed that to me. He doesn't tell me everything here. But at the same time, on July 14th of 2008, you have Global Sites, 
that was uh, minted by Paul J. Manafort and Rick Gates. You have uh, Jemina LLC, and I think we've talked about this before. We have Donald Trump uh, with this alias of John Miller, Docking Bay 94. We spoke about that earlier. He sells his mansion at the same time. And then, of course, you have Michael Cohen with Trinity Wellness uh, in uh, Coral Gables, Florida. And again, Trump, another alias that has opened up at that exact same time. But that Harvest Institute for Biblical Studies, I looked it up. I wanted to see, is this place really real? Well, if you look on Facebook, it's only like one person has ever visited the page and it's almost like it's just a, I don't know, a, it's not real or something. But I looked at the address, 4512 Asheville Highway, Knoxville, Tennessee. If you look it up in the registry as well, that's the exact registry for, for LLCs or corporations that's given to it as well. 4512 Asheville Highway, Knoxville, Tennessee. So I decided to look that up on Google Maps. And interestingly enough, it's a Napa Auto Parts store. Hmm. Very strange, isn't it? Now, I said to you, I'd talk a little bit about the things that I knew of myself and why I was interested in this story from the beginning because of the similarities here. Greg Palast wrote a very interesting book called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. In this book, I highlighted some of the things that he wrote in here. He said, let me suggest to you, Jake Horton, late senior vice president of Gulf Power, a subsidiary of Southern Company. Horton apparently knew about some of his company's less than kosher accounting practices, uh, Greg Plass alleges is in his book here. And he says here on April 1989, Horton decided to blow the whistle, confront bosses, and go to state officials about what obviously was a racketeering. Uh, now, Greg Plass looks at this as illegal campaign contributions. That's why he titles the book, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. He said he demanded to receive the use of the company's jet to go and confront Southern board directors. 10 minutes after takeoff, the jet exploded. And of course, Jay Corton was killed in that plane crash. The CEO believed his death was a suicide. And uh, he told BBC, I guess poor Jake saw no other way out. Now that's a, a crock. And I know that for a fact. You know what people don't know about, though, this case here, the power company there in Pensacola, Florida, Gulf Power, along with two other power companies, Southern Power of Georgia, as well as Alabama Power, is that there was a lot of what was going on, it was actually under investigation by the IRS and a couple of other agencies, that they were being investigated for illegal campaign contributions. Three people died in that plane crash, and of course, Jake Corton was one of those people that actually died. Uh, crashed into an apartment building, and as they said, the CEO of the uh, of Gulf Power, he felt like it was a suicide pack. But what they don't tell you is about all those times that CIA personnel had been called in to debug Gulf Power before certain high-level meetings were taking place between officials at the power company as well as politicians. Another thing that they don't tell you about is also brought up in this article here, widow to try to clear ex-utility official, the Eternal Revenue Service and the federal grand jury in Atlanta were investigating allegations that the power company illegally raised money for politicians deemed good for Gulf Power. Six months after the crash, Gulf Power pleaded guilty to two felony conspiracies to make illegal political contributions and conspiracy to defraud the government and the collection of taxes. The company paid a $500,000 fine. Gulf Power admitted in its plea that it violated tax laws by instructing suppliers to make political contributions and then to build back the utility with inflated invoices. Sounds like money laundering doesn't it? Well, the one thing that I did not realize at the time when all this was going on, because I was acutely aware of a lot of these different people that, that were involved in this, including some of the politicians I knew personally. Well, there was a lot of illegal drugs making their way from Central America into the very ports of Louisiana, Alabama, and would make their way up through Florida and be trafficked all through the United States. There's a lot of other things that I can't say as of right now, but I can tell you that the cases are very eerily similar. Right? In this case here, it says here on this particular article here, 
uh, from the St. Petersburg Times that when the grand jury in Atlanta called graphic artist Ray Howell to testify about his work for Gulf Power, later it was learned that just before he was to testify, Howell told a colleague at Gulf Power he felt that he had only three choices, go to the grand jury or shoot himself or run. There's a lot of corruption going on back then. There's a lot more companies than you could ever imagine. Remember when I told you about Giuliani, though, and that half million dollar retainer he had to represent Lev Parnas and those guys there? Well, there's another high profile attorney pictured on the screen here with Roy Jones Jr. And I don't think Roy Jones Jr. had anything to do with this, but that's none other than Fred Levin. Fred Levin also was given an, a, an annual fee of a half million dollars as a retainer for Gulf Power Corporation, where the CFO, Jay Corton, was stationed at. And a very interesting article here, Pensacola News Journal, it wasn't Fred Levin, but I believe, well, that's my thought there, I believe he knew who it was. It says here, in this article here that was written, and I forget exactly, it's the, uh, the Graner, Oh, goodness. I don't know exactly. I forget who actually published this. But anyway, the statement was made, uh, made. I met a retired local businessman in a bar, he writes in the prologue, when the well-dressed, gray-haired man asked, what was I doing in Pensacola? I told him I was writing a book on Fred Levin. Did he tell you, the guy says, did he tell you how he got away with killing Jay Corton and Willie Jr. Now, Willie Jr. was another local politician there in Pensacola. And there was a lot of alleged uh, activities going on about different politicians receiving suitcases full of cash. I can't say if they were or were not, but I could certainly believe it to be so, knowing the things that I do know. Uh, then there was a lot of other things surrounding the power companies and all these mysterious things that went on after the death of Jay Corton. In fact, within a year's time, there was the death of Robert McRae and Catherine McRae. And uh, they were murdered in what was believed to be a robbery gone bad. But the odd thing is, is that Mr. McRae was a former board member of Gulf Power that was expected to testify. And then there was this one here. Uh, the Worthy family that was murdered as well. I actually spoke to the investigator uh, at the time who was, not the investigator, but uh, no, I, I spoke to the investigator, but I also spoke to the son of late Mrs. Worthy, who actually, her son was a police officer, a veteran police officer. The investigator of the Worthy murder, murder still is working in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It says here, in May of 1988, Carolyn was returning from a Wednesday night church service when a masked man armed with a gun confronted her. She also had a gun, and after a brief standoff, she escaped. I can't go into the details about that, and I don't know personally about it, but it just kind of reminds me of some of the way the nefarious activities of the CIA that are men that are known to be assassins carry out things they do here in the U.S. as they're being paid by politicians. But at any rate, a lot of people never could figure out what was going on. How was, They knew that there was some kind of connection between the two because there was actually a bullet that matched the bullet at the McRae murders. But no one could understand, was there a connection between the Worthy murders and that of the McRae murders? Well, I found out there was one connection that no one ever picked up on. And that is, Mr. Worthy, before he had married his wife that was also killed in a shooting, uh, a murder, as well as setting their home on fire, trying to make it look like the house was burglarized and the house was, was burned down, but they were killed at point blank range. But the one thing, though, that connected, in my mind, this family to the Gulf Power case was none other than the fact that Mr. Worthy owned a lot of land and sold timber to the, I think, to Alabama Power for power poles. And according to his stepson, he was paid an exorbitant amount of money, far more than what the poles were worth. Again, another case of money laundering, just like we see in the case with President Trump. So, 
as these things went on, and this here, Florida, Alabama killings may be linked, as I said to you, they thought that there was a link. Uh, January 28, 1989, Robert and Catherine McRae were killed uh, in their home in Graceville, about 55 miles north of Panama City. And nine months later, authorities found the bodies of A.C. and Carolyn Worthy, who were shot to death, then buried at their, their burned in, at their home in the uh, McCullough, Alabama. Weird, isn't it? But you know what's stranger than that, though? Most of these politicians that were accused of taking illegal campaign contributions but never made it to court, that was all stopped thanks to President Bush. When he became President of the United States, he said, I was part of a, t let's see, Jay Corton, uh, excuse me, not Jay Corton. Uh, I think this is Greg Palace book here. He says, I was part of a team of investigating Southern financiers after Jake's plane went down, just after a grand jury voted to charge his company with criminal racketeering and manipu uh, manipulating its records. Millions of dollars were, ch uh, were charged to customers of Southern subsidiaries, uh, Georgia Power for spare parts that were not used. The Internal Revenue Service recommended indictment, but George Bush Sr.'s Justice Department put the kibosh on the prosecution. Yeah, he put the kibosh on it. He had the company plead guilty to a uh, fine of, uh, I think it was racketeering or something like that, or no, let's see what it was. Gulf Power pleaded guilty to two federal charges of illegal campaign contributions and tax evasion, and it also paid a half million dollar fine. And oddly enough, when George Sr.'s son becomes uh, runs for president. Donations from the electric uh, industries were also lopsided with Republicans receiving 63% of the Democrats, 37%. Bush took in almost seven times more than the electric industry than Gore, 447,000, nearly a half million dollars to 65,000. The Southern company was the biggest electric utilities donor, contributing over 1.4 million in the 2000 election cycle. Huh. Weird, isn't it? So that's why I say, the situation with Trump, Manafort, and all those guys is very eerily similar to what I've seen myself. As it says here in the article that was put out on the Atlantic, the Times reports on handwritten ledgers that list $12.7 million in cash payments to Manafort and Yanukovych's political party between 2007 and 2012. While it isn't clear from the records whether Manafort actually received the money, the documents obtained by the Ukrainian National Anti-Corruption Bureau sketch out some of Manafort's many ties in the region. Investigators assert that the disbursements uh, were part of a legal off-books system whose recipients also included election officials. In addition, criminal prosecutions are investigating the group of offshore shell companies that help members of Mr. Yanukovych inner circle finance their lavish lifestyles. Hmm, I can only imagine who that was. Companies engaged in was an 18 million deal to sell Ukrainian, Ukrainian cable television assets to partnerships put together by Mr. Manafort and the Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska, a close ally of President Vladimir Putin. Manafort's work for Yanukovych is not revelation, a revelation, but the 12.7 million figure is. The ledgers reportedly do not off, offer explanations for the payment, simply numbers. While Manafort declined to answer the newspaper questions, he gave a statement to CBS Major, uh, uh, Major Garrett in which he said, the simplest answer is the truth. I am a campaign professional. So I guess campaign professional must mean equate to what? Illegal activity, campaign contributions, need we say more? Listen, I'm sure many people will not appreciate the fact that we've exposed the things that we have. And it's, like I said, it's only the tip of the iceberg. I will put, though, in the description, it'll be there by tomorrow morning, how you can go and look at these documents for yourself. You judge for yourself. Um, all I can say is the information that I'm telling you about here, I have gone back, I've checked it, I've corroborated the information, that it is true. Is it a coincidence? And I, didn't, I gave you the aliases, but there are tons of documents laying right here as well where President Trump's own name is right there with Dmitry Robololev, 
Parnas. I didn't even get into that part uh, for the sake of time. As you can see, the video is extremely long. I didn't even go into that. But the, the, his own name is on many of the older do documents where he does not even use an alias. Um, and let me, I, I'll give you one right here. Let me just, I need to give you this while we're at it. Let me just I'll highlight it as well so you can see it. Okay. This is back in 2013 uh, in Latvia on uh, September 9th of 2013 at Global Energy Partners, Blue Sky Equity in Newport Ritchie, but Thor Investments uh, on the 11th of September 2013 by Fred Strunk. Okay. At the exact time there, we have, uh, or the day before, we had Marks uh, Products International, DT Marks International in Delaware, which was opened by President Donald Trump. Um, we have, uh, let's see here, and just, just so you can see what I'm talking about. That just shows you right there with Fred Strunk. Uh, but there, there are many others where, you know, President Trump's name with Igor Fruman, Manafort, uh, Dmitry Rabolilev, where their names cross the pages as well. And um, let me just see here. Maybe I have another one here. Um, but anyway, uh, You'll see that for yourself. When you go through the documentation, you'll find it out for yourself. He does, though, use, from what the alleged information is here, he uses this name of John Miller quite frequently. Uh, I'm looking at one from 2012, again. Uh, there's, just, there's just tons of information out here. So, you know, pray about it. That's all I can tell you. Pray about it. You know, let's don't just blindly support someone because somebody says they're a Christian. That's all I can tell you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you want to support the broadcast, you appreciate honesty, support the work we do. Our mailing address is on the screen. And, uh, and of course, you can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And we appreciate your caring for this ministry. God bless you, and good evening.